show! Welcome back everyone, this is my full breakdown and easter eggs video for the Batman movie. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the movie once or twice by now. There are so many things that we have to talk about. So if you're new to the channel, we are doing a giveaway for IMAX tickets so you can go back and see it a billion more times. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post your favorite moment from the movie in the comments. Careful for spoilers for the entire movie, we'll be talking about everything. And Matt Reeves has also clarified some of the Easter eggs and cameo scenes like the post credit scene since the movie has come out. So if you still have a lot of questions about some of the big twists, like the Joker of it all, I do have a lot of answers about that. What I'll do is I'll start at the beginning of the movie and go through scene by scene talking about all the Easter eggs, WTF moments. I'll jump around a little bit, but I will try to go through the movie in a linear fashion for the most part. The actual opening scene is of the Riddler watching the mayor and his family on Halloween night getting ready to kill him and start his grand plan to take out Carmine Falcone and all the corrupt people in positions of power who are working for him. That included the mayor, Gil Coulson, the district attorney, Pete Savage, the Gotham City Police Commissioner, and Bruce Wayne, the last surviving member of the Wayne family. He was going after Thomas Wayne, but because Bruce was the last one in the family that was left alive, he went after Bruce. The whole reason why he was after Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne, is because he blames Thomas Wayne for creating the circumstances that allowed all of these corrupt, powerful people to continue prospering for the past 20 years. Because Thomas Wayne created the well-intentioned but flawed billion-dollar Gotham City Renewal Fund. That's why he writes, renewal is a lie. Riddler's real name is Edward Nashton, which is from the comics. The whole reason he found out Falcone was behind all this is because he was a forensic accountant working for the Gotham City Renewal Fund. So that's how he got the ledgers and just followed the money trail, learning all these secrets. When he's actually killing the mayor, it's on Halloween night. This aspect of the plot, normal person being driven to become a villain, going around taking out even worse corrupt people, and a lot of other very specific scenes, all inspired by Batman the Long Halloween story in the comics. In real life, Matt Reeves' college screenwriting teacher was Jeff Loeb himself, the person who wrote Long Halloween. There were also a lot of Batman Hush Easter eggs. Jeff Loeb also wrote Batman Hush. The look and the vibe of this version of the Riddler is mostly inspired by the Zodiac Killer in real life, the way he used ciphers, his mannerisms, his actual costume, like the Zodiac Killer dressed exactly like this. The song that's playing over the opening scene is Ave Maria. Later in the movie, Riddler also starts singing it in Arkham when he and Batman are going at it and he knows that his bombs are about to collapse the barriers and the big attack on the election is going down. The song was also playing inside the Gotham City Orphanage when Batman and Gordon find the Riddler's clue about Thomas Wayne and going after Bruce Wayne next. Riddler wanted vengeance for the way Thomas Wayne, all these other corrupt powerful people he kills, forgot about him and the other children of the orphanage when they were younger. Ave Maria the song is actually a prayer to the Virgin Mary that they sing in the Catholic faith. It gets sung a lot by choirs, so I think the idea is that the Riddler, these other little kids, were made to sing it as children, and that's why in present day he's using it as sort of his anthem for vengeance. Also, this version of the Gotham City Orphanage is in the original Wayne Manor, if you wondered where Bruce Wayne's mansion was. In the movie, Thomas Wayne, before his death, had moved the family to the penthouse in the city and donated the old mansion to the city to be used as the orphanage. In the Dark Knight trilogy, Batman ends doing the exact same thing. He uses his will to turn Wayne Manor into an orphanage. Inside the mayor's house, Riddler sees his son dressed up as a ninja for Halloween, mock killing him. I don't think it's meant to be an overt League of Assassins Easter egg, but you could look at it that way. The Riddler kills the mayor using the carpet laying tool because it's all part of his grand plan to leave larger clues for Batman that he wants him to solve so that he'll eventually learn about his final plan to attack the election. Having hit his map of the city with a plan all drawn out underneath a carpet in his apartment left for Batman to find. The apartment that's right next door to the Iceberg Lounge. That's also a big comic book reference. The Iceberg Lounge is something that the Penguin creates later after he becomes the Penguin is this sort of posh club where Gotham's elite come where he hobnobs with them and holds court. In the movie, Penguin starts out as Falcone's second in command and it's sort of like a Scarface inside the Batman universe situation. Matt Reeves said we'll see him go full Scarface during the Batman HBO spinoff series where he starts to take over Falcone's former territory. Inside this version of the Iceberg Lounge, they also have a special club within the club for the really special people called 44 Below, as in 44 Below Zero, below freezing, also because it's literally below the ground. Inside the mayor's apartment, you also see a bunch of framed newspaper clippings of his big takedowns. One of them is for Sal Maroney's big drug bust. 
That's the event that Falcone used to get all these powerful people in the government and the police on his payroll a long time ago. As part of Riddler's plan to unmask the corruption, metaphorically, literally in Gotham, he uses his website with the URL rotalada.com, which loosely translates to rat with wings, because this whole plan is really about getting rid of Carmine Falcone, the source of the corruption. Falcone was the rat who informed all these powerful people how to take down Sal Maroney, making their careers, and Falcons have wings. So Falcone was the rat with wings. Also, the funny connection to Batman is that bats are like rats with wings. Matt Reeves designed this to be kind of like a world's greatest detective Batman movie. In the movie, Penguin literally calls Batman the world's greatest detective. The real reason Riddler kept writing to Batman wasn't because he learned his secret identity and wanted to punish him because he was going after Bruce Wayne too. At least during the events of the movie, he has not yet learned Batman is Bruce Wayne. Not yet. I think he will eventually though. He'd been writing to Batman because he'd become a fan of his the past two years. He'd been following the news about all of Batman's takedowns in the news. The movie takes place at the end of Batman year two. That's why at the beginning of the movie, he says two years of nights have turned him into a nocturnal creature, turned him into a bat metaphorically as he's been literally turning himself into the Batman. Riddler felt like they had been on the same mission. We're the same. We're trying to do the same thing. During their last conversation at Arkham Asylum, Riddler even explains that he felt like Batman and he were a team working together this whole time. The Batman hush easter eggs sort of culminate at the end of the movie during this conversation at Arkham 2, where Batman thinks for a second that Riddler has learned a secret identity because inside Riddler's apartment, there were a bunch of newspaper clippings with scrawlings across them saying, who is the Batman? So Riddler was trying to find out who Batman was. And during their conversation, Riddler keeps repeating the name Bruce Wayne over and over in this really creepy way. So Batman thinks that it's all over and he's going to reveal his identity to make himself famous. But then they kind of have a WTF funny moment where he takes it back and says, we almost had him. We almost had Bruce Wayne. Batman realizes that his secret is still safe and gets really pissed at Riddler. And that's when Riddler starts to hate Batman for calling him a crazy person, not reciprocating his offer of friendship or partnership. It's okay though, Riddler does wind up making a friend at the end of the movie. But the other big Batman hush easter egg is for the reporter that Falcone killed for Thomas Wayne. His name was Elliot and during the Riddler's viral video for Thomas Wayne across the screen, he literally writes the word hush. But Matt Reeves actually clarified that the reporter is not literally meant to be his version of the hush character. The opening narration of that first Batman scene is also right out of the comics, is also right out of the long Halloween storyline. In fact, if you went to one of the special preview screenings for the movie this past week, DC was giving away free special editions of the long Halloween in the theaters. Batman's first takedown is the drophead dressed in the drophead mask. There's also an anti-drug advertisement on the billboard here about the drops. They were the designer drug that Sal Maroney was originally selling in the city. Then Falcone ratted him out, took over his drug operation and installed all of his people in positions of power. But speaking of drugs in the movie, Batman also injects himself at the end during this big final fight with the green fluid that seems kind of like the Bane venom serum. Gordon fires up the bat signal in the movie. They've been using it for a good long while, but because Gordon is not commissioner and the rest of the police basically hate Batman, he and Gordon have the bat signal at a secret location. Maybe once Gordon eventually becomes commissioner, he'll put the bat signal on top of police headquarters like it is in the comics and in the other movies. His second big takedown is the gang dressed in the skeleton makeup. They seem like they might be part of Joker's gang from the comics because of the makeup that they're wearing. But because this version of the Joker, played by Barry Keoghan in that cameo scene, hasn't fully become the Joker yet, he isn't using the Joker name, I don't think there's literally meant to be a connection between this gang and his character. But this actor here, Jay Lasurgo, also played a version of Tim Drake Robin during Titan Season 3. That takes place in a different universe, so this is just a coincidence. In the context of the movie, he's just meant to be a regular kid who Batman scares straight, literally. Like he's so terrified of Batman now that he won't commit any more crimes. But the Riddler's first clue that he leaves for Batman at the mayor's is an owl Halloween card. Halloween because of the long Halloween. The owl you can also take as one of the many Court of Owls references in the movie. Robert Pattinson himself even said the Court of Owls is probably going to be one of the main villains in the sequel movies. Thomas and Martha were leaders of the Court of Owls in this timeline. I like that one. Oh, that's a... Hmm. I was definitely kind of thinking that Court of Owls is probably going to be a, in the sequel. Ooh, it definitely seems don't like... Say it. Mommy, I'm literally just guessing. I just no. keep saying it. <laughs> Good thing it's not in this film. <laughs> or is it? Or is it? The other Court of Owls Easter eggs are in the new backstory for Thomas and Martha Wayne in the history of their family, the history of Gotham. 
The Riddler reveals in the video that Martha Wayne came from the Arkham family and the Waynes and the Arkhams are the two founding families of Gotham City. The Court of Owls is this group made up of all the founding families of Gotham, secretly controlling events in the city for hundreds of years. They might get into that more during the Batman Arkham series because Martha Wayne's family created Arkham Asylum. So we're just teasing more of this secret history of Gotham that they'll continue revealing through the rest of the stories. And Riddler's first riddle is, what does a liar do when he's dead? The answer is, he lies still. His second riddle is actually for Pete Savage, the commissioner. Follow the maze till you find the rat, bring him into the light, you'll find where I'm at. The answer is Carmine Falcone. Bring him into the light literally under the street lamp outside the Iceberg Lounge and he'll find where Riddler's apartment is. Even though this is a Mad Scientist card, you could think of the use of Mad, specifically by Matt Reeves, as a reference to Mad Hatter. The third riddle is actually a series of three different riddles for Gil Coulson. The first one was, it can be cruel, poetic, or blind, but when it's denied, it's violence you may find. The answer is justice. The second one is, if you are justice, please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? The answer is the price of his bribes, which were about 10 grand a month. The third one, since your justice is so select, please tell us which vermin you're paid to protect. The answer was Carmine Falcone. The next riddle comes from his attempt to kill Bruce Wayne with the bomb. Alfred opened the mail, setting it off. Riddler didn't know that he would do that. He was hoping that Bruce Wayne himself would open it. That's why in the package it said, for his eyes only. The reason why the card for Batman was left in a fireproof envelope is because he didn't know that they were the same person and he wanted Bruce Wayne to die in the explosion but the card to survive so that Batman would find it. It just says, see you in hell, which was meant to be a reference to Batman visiting him in Arkham after he gets captured because the Riddler knew that eventually the police would capture him and throw him in Arkham. The next riddle is his confession at his apartment. The lines he drew all over the card here are a map reference to the floor map in the election. His next riddle at Arkham is actually for the election attack itself. What's black and blue and dead all over? The answer is Batman himself because he expects Batman to die trying to save Bella Royale and all the other people there. Then even though it's not his riddle, the next riddle is actually Joker's riddle. Riddle me this, the less of them you have, the more one is worth. The answer is a friend, just teasing Joker Riddler team up in the next big project. Like Matt Reeves said, the next place they'll address this will probably be during the Arkham series on HBO. The final riddle is actually during that post credit scene in the final message from the Rata Alada website saying goodbye with a question mark as if to say this isn't the end and the Riddler's deep breathing over the scene meant to show that he recorded another video which we have not seen yet. But at the mayor's house his son finds his body, Batman sort of sees himself in the little boy because he also witnessed his parents murder in crime alley, later he saves the boy's life twice, once at the funeral during the Gil Coulson attack and then again at the end of the movie at the election. I do not think the boy is meant to be some future Robin. I think it's just Batman trying to metaphorically save himself. Like he sees the boy as another version of him. They reveal his version of the Batcave, at least at this point in his timeline, is inside an abandoned subway terminal called the Wayne Terminus, literally built by his family long ago. We get a quick look at some of his gadgets, his gear all over the place. We learn that he uses special contact lenses which can record video. He also keeps a handwritten journal for each night that he spends fighting crime as Batman. And he calls his work, Becoming the Batman, the Gotham Project. Like the Batman is literally Bruce Wayne's Gotham Project. I think the idea with these journals that they're setting up for the future, potentially for a big payoff at the end of whatever Matt Reeves trilogy is going to be, Eventually, one of them will publish his journals publicly, like Rorschach's journal at the end of Watchmen. When Alfred and Batman start arguing about Wayne Enterprises and all the accountants and his family's legacy possibly going away, it's because at this point, he does not care about being Bruce Wayne. 99% of his time is spent in full-on Batman mode. He hasn't developed the billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne persona yet, and because he's spending so much of his wealth on all of his Batman gear, and he's still technically in charge of Wayne Enterprises, neglecting those regular business duties, he's burning through all of his assets. Takes an awful lot of money to be Batman, gotta get that from somewhere. The reason why Alfred is able to decode the Riddler ciphers is because he used to be a member of British military intelligence before he became Thomas Wayne's butler. When they discover the mayor's thumb drive and he goes back to the Iceberg Lounge to question Penguin, they introduce Zoe Kravitz's Selena Kyle Catwoman for the first time. She's very similar to Batman in that the Selena Kyle waitress persona is the mask, Catwoman is her real personality. Her being Carmine Falcone's secret daughter, also a twist right out of the Long Halloween story. Falcone also later confesses to being the mystery person who strangled her mother to death when she was a child. 
when Batman catches her in the act of trying to steal her friend's passport from the mayor's safe, that's also right out of the long Halloween. But in the original story, it was happening inside Carmine Falcone's house. At the mayor's funeral, Falcone tells the story of how Thomas Wayne saved his life when they were younger. That's also right out of the long Halloween. In the movie, Falcone used the event to get closer to Thomas Wayne, pretending to be his friend. And when the reporter tries to out Martha Wayne's history of mental health issues, Thomas Wayne asked Falcone to scare him, not knowing that he'd have him killed. Falcone had planned to use the event to control Thomas Wayne, but when he told him that he was going to confess everything to the police, Falcone had Joe Chill kill them in Crime Alley. They never actually show the Crime Alley scene because we've seen it so many times. It's like Uncle Ben dying in Spider-Man movies. Like, how many times do you need to watch Uncle Ben die? Then they reveal the new Batmobile during the big chase scene with the Penguin. It's a souped-up muscle car with a jet engine. The idea is that over time, all of his gear, all of his tech, the Batmobile will evolve. All of his stuff right now is just meant to feel very homemade. Like a billionaire and his butler could actually spend a bunch of money and build stuff like this in their garage. Just the two of them. That when the Riddler allows himself to be captured after he kills Falcone, that's because he's already set everything in motion for the election attack and feels like his quest is complete, like he did everything he set out to do. When they actually do arrest the Riddler, he has two different IDs inside his wallet. One is for Edward Nashton, which is his actual name, but the other ID reads Patrick Parker. That's another alias the Riddler used in the comics. I already explained all these Batman hush Easter eggs during their final argument, his final riddle here, before Batman goes to try and stop the attack. But during the attack, all these people are meant to be Riddler's followers who are watching his videos this whole time. Other conspiracy theorists who've been drinking the Kool-Aid and just gotten hocked up and are ready to kill a whole bunch of people. I've already explained that Easter egg for the Venom serum here, but he also reveals that his Batman symbol on his chest doubles as a tactical knife. He can pull it out of his chest and use it as a tool, as a weapon, like a battering. And as he narrates over the ending, things are going to get worse before they get better because Gotham is still flooded and there's this crime element, parts of the city the police can't get to. They show the Penguin in the Iceberg Lounge, just looking out over everything, getting ready to make a huge power play, taking over Carmine Falcone's former empire. That'll all play out during the Batman HBO episodes for the Penguin series. But then back at Arkham Asylum, they have their infamous Joker cameo scene with Barry Keoghan's version of the character, confirmed by Matt Reeves as the new version of the Joker in this universe. He says, what is it they say? One day you're on top, the next you're a clown. Big Joker reference. Then he says, let me tell you, there are worse things than being, and trails off. He was about to say, there are worse things than being a clown. And don't be sad, you did so well. You know Gotham loves a comeback story, like the Riddler will come back, as full comic book Riddler. And riddle me this, Riddler's trademark catchphrase, the less of them you have, the more one is worth. Like I said, just teasing Joker Riddler team up in the future, mostly on the HBO Arkham series. Reeves said that he doesn't have a plan for Joker right now in the movies, but he actually does plan to bring him back during the Arkham HBO series. There was a deleted scene with the Joker and it took place earlier when Batman is interrogating Riddler before the final election attack. When he came to Arkham, he was actually going to walk by the Joker's cell and Joker was going to try and provoke him saying, it looks like it's our anniversary. And it was meant to show that Joker and Batman had history before Joker became Joker, like he hasn't taken the Joker name yet. He did something terrible enough to get himself thrown in Arkham by Batman. They might wind up releasing that deleted scene online sometime in the next couple of months. At the end of the movie, Catwoman says she's going to Bloodhaven to lay low because it's too crazy in Gotham right now. Bloodhaven is where Dick Grayson is from in the comics. They could always introduce a version of Dick Grayson in the future. But then I already explained that post credit scene with the Rata Alata website message. Just a teaser for him broadcasting another video, like he recorded a secret video that we have not watched yet. It's an actual website that you can visit in real life, so maybe that's where they'll post that deleted scene of the Joker. But if you spotted any other huge Easter eggs in the movie that I didn't mention in the video, write them below in the comments. I will do another Joker video later this weekend after people have a chance to see the movie. Click here for my video on the Batman ending, the Joker scene, the post credit scene, and click here for my full review of the movie. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.